If you remember from a few videos ago, to get the colors to show up in these like nice different colors, this blue, orange, and red, I had to add this colon N to the color part. And what that is secretly doing is that is telling Altair what type of data encoding to use. And so here I've linked to the relevant spot in the Altair documentation. And here it lists these five different encoding data types. And I've never used the last one, this GeoJSON one, but I think in Math 10, we're going to use all four of these first ones. And it's also going to be relevant when we get to the machine learning portion of the class. And just briefly, this first one is going to correspond to regression problems in machine learning. And the second and third ones, they're going to correspond to classification problems in machine learning. But uh, back to this. So in this case, if I like scroll, scroll down to the most recent chart, here the colors look pretty good. And if I were to instead say like colon N, like we did up above, then I get the exact same colors because Altair is correctly choosing that this should be a nominal data type, which in this case means these are discrete classes and the order doesn't matter at all. Oh, what if I change it to the other discrete class portion, but I say that order does matter. So this is colon O for ordinal. Okay, the one where ordering does matter. Okay, then it tries to change it to this like increasing darkness. And like, what's the ordering that it chooses? Well, I believe here it's doing it alphabetically. So it's saying it should go Europe, then Japan, then USA. What if I try uh, colon Q for quantitative? And here it just doesn't work because it doesn't know how to interpret Europe, Japan, and USA numerically. So I'm just getting nothing showing up here in this case. So the main point of that was that Altair does a good job with the default. And I wanted to show like what happens if we change to some of these other types. Uh, as another example, what if I change horsepower to colon Q? It looks exactly the same because, again, it's correctly determining that this is a quantitative data type. Uh, in this case, colon O versus colon N isn't going to make any difference uh, from each other, but they will make a big difference from colon Q. So here it's saying... The like values do not matter. All that matters is the different possibilities. So like, for example, the gap between 49 and 52 in this case is the exact same as the gap from 52 to 53. Because I'm not thinking of this as like some continuous scale from 46 all the way over to 230. Instead, I'm thinking of this as just like these discrete values here. Uh, as maybe one more example, what happens if I put this, instead of marking them as circles, what happens if I mark them with bars? Okay, then again, I have this same feature where it goes like 48 to 49 to 52 with like no clear difference in the spacing between these. And th on the other hand, I'm also seeing these like bars here that are showing like what are all the different cars that had, in this case, it was horsepower on the x-axis. What are all the different cars that have horsepower of 52? And so, for example, if I try to check those using Boolean indexing, I can say df horsepower equals equals 52. And there are exactly four. And that corresponds to these four different values that are showing up here. And notice how the bars are getting like stacked one on top of each other. So like, for example, this was for weight, I think. And so is weight like 1600, 2000, 1900, or also almost 2000, and also almost 2000. Okay, and so... Those were showing up here. So I guess all of these bars have about the same height. 
And this Toyota one should be the, the lowest. So it's a little hard to tell from, from the way this is drawn, but at least you can see that there are these four different little bars here stacked on top of each other. And that corresponds to these four different cars that have horsepower equal to 52.